In 5 minute velo number 50, I started to look at whether oval chain rings would give me a speed boost. So I bought myself a set of good value oval chain rings and swapped them for the round chain rings on my Giant Defy. I had already generated quite a lot of speed data using the round chain rings, so I set about testing the oval chain rings. Unfortunately, the weather really didn't play ball, and in the last video I just gave two results, not really enough for any statistical analysis. I've now managed to add to those oval chain ring results, and now I have a much larger amount of data. In this video, I'll compare the speed data for both the round and the oval chain rings to see whether those oval chain rings do give a speed boost or not. Let's start by looking at the data for the round rings only. The graph shows average power versus average speed. Let's overlay the oval ring data. Now these were paired rides ridden under as near identical conditions as possible. The solid lines are linear fit trend lines. As you can see, the scatter in the oval chain ring results are much greater than that of the round chain rings, and they're much greater than the difference between the trend lines. Of the Anecdotally, the scatter in the results seem to be related to the weather conditions, in particular the wind direction and speed, which obviously I had little control over, other than choosing the day and time to ride. This graph may be enough to persuade many of you that the speed you can attain has nothing to do with the shape of the chain rings, that, or at least the chain rings that I was using. Let's look into this in a bit more detail. I'm just a simple engineer, not a statistician, so I'll be looking at this in a fairly rudimentary way. First of all, I'm going to make the data more uniform by removing the 40 km training route data. So I'm just left with the 9.5 km route data that you can see here. Here's a table of the results that just focus on the chain ring data. In these tables, the main dependent data are average speed, average heart rate, and the VAM climbing rate metric. At the bottom of each table, there are some basic statistics. The main one is the numerical average, but I've also included the upper and lower 95% confidence limits. At this stage, it's useful to create a hypothesis. In my previous video, the limited data that was presented suggested there was no speed benefit of using oval chain rings over round ones. So I'm going to use these observations to create the null hypothesis. Oval chain rings confer no speed advantage over round chain rings. We can now use the data and statistics to work out whether this hypothesis is not true. But first, let's just look at the raw numbers. For the round chain rings, my average speed was 27.32 km an hour. And for the oval chain rings, 27.30 km an hour. So, almost identical. Superficially, when looking at the average heart rate and the VAM, the differences between the two chain rings again are small. However, are the differences statistically significant? To examine this, I looked at the difference between the two sets of data using a student t-test. And for both the average speed and the VAM, both are relatively high numbers, which suggests the difference in the mean is insignificant compared to the scatter of the data. This means on the basis of the data presented here, the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. Or to put it more simply, my data does not suggest that oval chain rings are faster than round chain rings, or either my average speed or the rate at which I can climb. Right then, let's summarize. Dylan Johnson, see my last video, suggested that oval chain rings weren't worth the money because they convey no advantage. My testing agreed with Dylan in terms of a no advantage. And although they convey no advantage, I've also found that they have no disadvantages. They ride just like round chain rings, the gear changing is just as good, and they were good value. So on that basis, I would say, yes, by all means, go ahead and get some oval chain rings. Just don't expect that they will make you faster. Like Dylan, I would suggest that if you have round chain rings already and you're happy with them, then stick with them. From me, for now, it's goodbye. But what about that heart rate data? 
where the differences were potentially significant. I included the heart rate data for another reason. If you use oval chain rings with some power meters, they overestimate the power by a few percent, so potentially I'm not comparing like with like. Now I don't know whether my power meter falls into this category or not, as the manufacturers don't specify this. However, on their website, they do show the power meter being used with a rotor oval chain ring, which suggests it doesn't suffer from that issue. However, let's assume it does. If the power is overestimated, my actual power will be slightly less, and therefore I would expect my heart rate to be slightly lower. When I look at the heart rate data, the average is actually slightly higher for the oval chain ring. However, I should also consider that my level of fitness was lower for when I used the oval chain rings. So unfortunately, the heart rate data is rather inconclusive.